this morning is Isaiah 64, and we're going to read verses 1 to 9. Isaiah 64, verses 1 to 9. Before we read, let's just pray. God, we thank you that we can be here this morning, that we can gather here as your church, and that we can know that you are here with us, that you are present here and with us every day. Thank you that we have the honor of singing praises and of worshiping you, and that we also have the opportunity to read your word. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand what we are reading this morning and that we can hear what you want to say to us this morning and so that we can make this scripture our own and live according to it. We ask this in your name. Amen. Isaiah 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. And when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help, you come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continued to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Today I already said earlier that today is the first Sunday in Advent. And Advent is a time of year in which we await and in which we long for the presence of God. On this, on this Sunday, we place our hope in God. God is the one who through Jesus Christ saved us and gave us a new future. Advent symbolizes not only the longing for the birth of Jesus, but also the longing for when he will come again. Advent is a time when the church calls out, Come, Lord Jesus. Our scripture is Israel's lamentation in a time of longing and waiting. They just came out of exile in Babylon, and the Persians who ruled the ancient world at that time allowed Israel to return home, uh, to return to Jerusalem, and to rebuild the city and the temple. But this presents a huge obstacle for Israel. They have to rebuild everything because everything was in ruins, also the temple. But while they had to rebuild everything, they didn't feel the presence of God. And they asked the question, did God forsake them? Did God forget them? There was no hope and nothing was ever going to be the same. These verses uh, that we read uh, this morning actually has to be read with a larger unit from 63 verse 7 to 64 verse 12. 
And the prophet Isaiah is praying on behalf of Israel. It is a lament like we get in the Psalms and the lamenta Lamentations. And the largest scripture can be divided into two parts, 63 verses 7 to 14, which tells us about God's calling of Israel, how he cared for them, how he saved them, and how he loved them. And 63 verse 15 to 64 verse 12 is the lamentation and where Israel is telling God and calling to God, please look down toward us and see what is happening, see what is going on. In the first part, the one praying is talking to Israel and he is reminding them about what God has done for them. He reminds them of God's love and care in the past. But they also realize that their sin and their own wrongdoing caused God to punish them. Their sin is the reason that God sent them into exile. Their sin is the reason that they cannot feel God's presence. In the second part, follows the lamentation. The one praying is now speaking to God. And in verse 12, he ends this, this lamentation by begging God to forgive them, to not remember their sin, to not hold, to not hold it against them. In the second part of the lamentation, um, 64 verse 8, is actually the most important verse because it shows Israel's trust in God. It says, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. And in this lamentation, as in all other lamentations, trust is the central part. The people are lamenting their, their situation. They are unhappy. The situation is dire, but they trust in God to save them. They trust in God to help them and to lead them. Verse 8 gives us two metaphors or images for God. God is Father, and the potter and the clay. God as Father is not an image that we hear often in the Old Testament. Although that is how Israel thought of God, they didn't say it, they didn't write it down. And it is only written down a few times in the Old Testament. But a father in the Old Testament wasn't only a senior member, male member of a family. It meant more than that. And that is why it is so important that God is described as a father. A father was the person from whom you got your identity. And being part of a family with a father also meant that you had property. So a father included property. And this image of God as father comforts Israel because they know where they come from, they know who they are, and they know to whom they are praying. The image of God as father is strengthened by the metaphor of the potter and the clay. The word refer referring to God as potter is the same word that is used in Genesis 2 where God created man out of dust. Israel here remembers that God created them. They realize they are nothing without God. While they sing a, lament a lamentation, they have the comfort that God is forming them as he would claim. Verse 8 
is the most important verse in the scripture because it shows that the light is still there. Nothing can take away the light, the hope and the comfort that God is their Father and their Creator. In Advent, we find ourselves also in a dilemma because we know that Christ came. We know that He was born, that He did work on earth, that He changed everything. We know that He died, that He was risen, and we know that He went to heaven. We also know that he's supposed to come again. So while we know that God is in charge of everything, we also see what is going on in the world. We see the destruction and the corruption and the violence and all the bad things going on. We know that God already saved not only us, but the creation. But we also know that everything is not yet as it should be. We expect that God will be present, but we see the pandemic, the economic downfall, and people who are suffering. Every year at Advent, we are confronted with living in between. And this is a time of hope. We live in between the first and the second coming. And the lamentation in, Zy in Isaiah says something about our own experiences. Come, Lord God, look at us and help us. But Advent is also filled with reminders about the saving work of the Lord. The lamentation remembers who God is. He created everything. He leads us and He cares for, for us. He is our Father. He is our Creator. This Isaiah text leads us into Advent 2020. And it was a difficult year. A year like no other. And we all experienced hardships and hopelessness and uncertainty, and we still do. But this scripture in Isaiah wants to remind us that God is our Father and our Creator. And therefore, we can hope regardless of the circumstances. Amen. I would like to give a few moments of silence and let us be still and think about all the things that maybe we have done wrong this week. Times we didn't do what God expected of us. Times when we didn't help people the way God asks of us. And times when we did not, did not bring peace and love and kindness. And let us pray to God to help us in this coming week to do better. And then I will um, end with a prayer. So let us be silent, still for a moment. Lord our God, thank you that in these uncertain times we can hope and we can call on you to save us and to lead us and to show us the way. Thank you Lord that we can trust in you and all the promises that you made. Thank you Lord that we know that you're present, that you care for us, and that you love us, and that you bless us. We ask that you 
go with us in this week. That where we are and where we're going, that we'll experience your love and your presence everywhere and every second of every day. That we will know that no matter what happens, that you are there and you care for us and you love us and you will save us. God, be with our families, our loved ones, our friends, that they will know you and that they will know your presence, that you will also keep them safe and be with them everywhere. God, we ask that you be with all those who are sick, who are in pain, all those who are unhappy and lonely, that you will hold them in your hand and care for them and take away their sorrows. Be with the people who are going on vacation, who are leaving or already went, that they will also be safe on their way and they, that they will know that you are present with them. Be with all the people who in, this fest, in these festive times will go hungry, will not have food to eat or shelter to stay. God, so that they also may know that you care for them and you love them. That you will send someone to them who will help them. God, we ask all of these things, not because we are deserving of them, but because we know you are our Father, you are our Creator, and you love us. Amen. In 1 Corinthians, Paul wrote, uh, writes, I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. And that is also our hope and our uh, blessing. I'm going to ask that we stand up and I'm going to lead us in the Apostles' Creed so that we can confess our faith also in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under, under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand and of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us end with the song, Have Thy Own Way, Lord, before I bless you. 